Lori. She knows she, she knows she's up first. For the prayer. Good morning. I would like to welcome you to our 2018 Honors Chapel. Uh, we're very glad that you're here. Uh, we like to have an Honors Chapel. We like to recognize students for their achievements. There are a variety of achievements that will be recognized today. Some of them uh, have taken four or five years to accomplish, and uh, that's well worth recognizing, uh, completing uh, a course of study, a degree, um, demonstrating Christ-like character, Christian service, all those things we want to recognize today. We want to uh, demonstrate that uh, hard work and uh, sincere faith are, are what we value highly here. And so that's the purpose of Honors Chapel. Um, so there will be a variety of people coming up to share these awards with our students. And so... Um, uh, we look forward to uh, each of those coming and, and uh, sharing the, the results of the work that those uh, staff and faculty members have done with our students. Would you bow with me for prayer, please? Heavenly Father, uh, today we want to come to you, and Lord, today is a special day. It's a day that marks uh, the end of a, a semester. It marks the end of a school year for uh, several students here. It marks the end of their uh, their college, their college career, it marks the accomplishment of tremendous goals. Um, Lord, our prayer today is that all the work that has gone into this semester and the year and and the college career that those things are just uh, in preparation for continued service. Lord, we have uh, pursued dedicated disciples uh, to bring them to this college. Uh, to train them to be servant leaders for the church. And Lord, today is the day we celebrate that. And we want to uh, commend all the students, Lord, to your hands. And so, Lord, today, whether a student is a freshman, a sophomore, junior, or senior, um, we pray that uh, you, would, you would guide them and you would direct them. Lord, you would help them as they uh, go through the process of uh, following your leading, following your call, uh, to service, and to ministry. Uh, Lord, I thank you for the, uh, those who have, have helped prepare these students, our staff and our faculty, and uh, ask your blessing on them. Lord, thank you for this day. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I would like to invite our staff and our faculty, if they would, to stand. Would our staff and faculty stand? Students, here's your opportunity to... Uh, Show some appreciation. Thank you all very much. Our first presentations today are going to be made by Lori Peter, uh, Director of Students Development. Oh, I forgot to do that. Hang on. Turn it on. You got it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm here to recognize our outgoing student council members and our newly elected student council members. The student council represents the students before the faculty and administrators of the college. Student council ministers to the spiritual, physical, intellectual and social needs of the student body to encourage personal excellence and to contribute to the development of programs that accomplish the mission and objectives of the college. At this time, I would like to recognize our outgoing 2017-2018 student council <coughs> officers and representatives. Please come forward when I call your name. President Preston Kalesha, Vice President Keegan Franey, Secretary Amy Ecker. Would you go to that side over there? Treasurer Andrew Thomas. Senior class representative. We didn't have one. 
Junior class representative, Christian Collins. Sophomore rep, Cassidy Derichek. Freshman rep, Elena Hale. Off-campus representative, Billy McKinley. Multicultural representative, Sarada Sase. And historian, Anna Fincher. I wanna personally thank each one of you for your service and commitment to Student Council, Central, and God's Kingdom. Thank you for a great year, guys. And now, we are installing our new Student Council officers and class representatives for the 2018-2019 academic year. These individuals were nominated and elected by you, the student body, of Central Christian College of the Bible. The installation of new officers is being presided over by our outgoing council and will be led by our outgoing president, Preston Kalesha. Will the following people please come to the front when I call your name? President Christian Collins. You can go. <laughs> Vice President Austin Altmix. Secretary Alexia Scott. We will elect a treasurer in the fall, so if that's something that you think you'd like to do, please see one of these officers and we'll, put, we'll have a special election next fall. Uh, class representatives, senior Aaron Peter. <laughs> Junior Ian Whitmore. <laughs> and sophomore Rosie Borgela. <laughs> Multicultural representative Elias Sorto. Elias, and historian Garrett Jones. And now I will hand it over to Preston. <laughs> Not today. <clears throat> All right. I am describing the roles and responsibilities that this new student council has. So I'm going to read a little thing to each of you. Christian Collins, as president-elect, you've been selected by the students to be the leader of student council for the coming year. You're responsible for guiding the student body and accomplishing its mission. May you work intelligently and seriously to fulfill the responsibilities of your office. Austin, as vice president-elect, your record of accomplishment indicates that you have those qualities of leadership which we should all possess. You are to assist the president in directing the work of the student council, preside over meetings in his absence, and continue to exhibit Christ-like character. Alexia. As secretary-elect, you have chosen to participate as an executive team member, keep accurate minutes of our meetings, and carry on correspondence, and keep Christian in check. <laughs> Aaron Peter, Ian Whitmore, and Rosie, as class representatives, you have been chosen to represent and lead your class as an executive team member. Elias, as the multicultural student representative, you have been chosen to represent and lead our multicultural students as an executive team member. <clears throat> Garrett Jones. As historian, you've been chosen to record student council activities and events through picture, video, and social media posts. Do each of you accept your responsibilities of office and do your best to uphold the ideals and principles of student council? If so, as a group, answer, we do. We do. <laughs> Good job. I now declare each of you properly and dutifully installed as representative office. At this time, I'd like to recognize a couple of uh, organizations that have uh, provided some benefits to our uh, graduates. To all of our graduates, uh, the North American Christian Convention has provided a certificate for a free registration to the convention this summer. And so um, we're, we're excited for that. I believe the convention's in Indianapolis, Indiana. And so um, you will pick up when we bring you up here as a graduate to recognize you. On your way back to your seat, I'd like for you to pick up the certificate to take with you. Another organization that has uh, um, 
decided to bless you is the Christian Restoration Association, and they have provided a year's subscription to the Restoration Herald. And so this is a magazine that has Bible study, uh, ministry, and uh, a lot of articles in it. And so as the graduates come up, we'll ask you on your way back to your seat if you'd pick up uh, the copy of the Restoration Herald that has the subscription um, inside of it. So congratulations. Those organizations uh, are happy to recognize your accomplishments. At this time, uh, we're going to have Professor Walt Harper, Professor of Bible and Ministry, come up and share some other um, uh, things that, that uh, organizations have provided for our students. I do want to uh, recognize Mr. Harper for his hard work in our youth and family ministry program. He has uh, done some great things in our curriculum to uh, add things like uh, students preparing crazy days or so students in that program in, that, in, in one of the classes get to plan a large event for youth. And he also created a class called Philosophy of Family Ministry, which goes to a conference and um, students get special treatment by the leadership of that conference. It's been a great thing, been going on for three years. And some of the benefits of uh, Professor Harper's uh, hard work are are coming to, to uh, some of you students, and he'll tell you more about it. The first organization that I'd like to talk to you about is Group Publishing, and uh, Group is one of the most trusted names in church ministry resources. And Group would also like to congratulate each of you on your tremendous achievement. A uh, group would like to celebrate with you as you begin your career in the years ahead. They say incredible things are going to happen as you serve God and others with your special gifts and talents. And group will be with you along the, ways, along the way. And they say we want to kick things off right with a special gift. So uh, directed to some of our ministry majors, uh, group publishing has sent a special gift. Uh, beginning with... Christian education, in a torn envelope, is uh, Cecilia Fox. <laughs> Micah Lockman. Martha Davidson. Deja Jackson. Lauren Stone. And Gisele Tupel. Our preaching ministry with Aaron Dowell and Lance Patrick. And our youth and family graduates, Bryce Houchin. <laughs> Dylan Bradshaw. Nicole Karras. Nathan Fleming. Ashley Wood. And Christopher Lawrence.
Under the Rethink Group, Orange and the Orange Conference works with churches all over the world to develop leaders who leverage the influence of the church and the family to make a greater impact on the next generation. Orange provides resources for ministry leaders for pre-K, college, uh, senior ministers, small groups, and much more. Central Christian College of the Bible has partnered with uh, Orange through our course Philosophy of Family Ministry. The people at Orange are excited about your work in developing servant leaders for the church. For the students who have successfully passed Philosophy of Family Ministry course and attended the Orange Conference, Orange has generously provided resources and tools for you as you begin your ministry. Those people that will receive these awards, McKay Applegarth, Hannah Belzer, Jessica Black, Martha Davidson, Aaron Dowell, Christopher Lawrence, Katie Madras, Ashley Wood, Nicole Karras, Danielle Davis, Lance Patrick, and Ashley Wood. Thank you. So I was asked to say a little bit more. <laughs> uh, in each one of these boxes that you have here um, is a, a year's worth of curriculum from the Orange Conference. And depending on the size of your church, that could be clear up to about $1,000. Um, it also has several resources and, and books um, that uh, about several hundred other dollars worth of books in that as well. So enjoy. At this point in time, we'd like to acknowledge uh, students who have received certificates. A certificate is a specialized course of study that may be 16 or 30 or 45 hours. And so we'd like to recognize those students that uh, are here today. First of all, the Certificate of Biblical Knowledge. We have Glenn Sam Shelton. Children's Ministry Certificate, Katie Madras. <laughs> Certificate of Bible and Ministry, Javen Schrode. <laughs> Certificate of Biblical Knowledge, Amber Adams. And TESOL Certificate, Sarah Wellsand. Congratulations. Our next awards are our Biblical Language Awards. And uh, I'll ask Chad Suma and Daryl Ammon if they will come up to present these. These awards are presented by Zondervan Publishing, and they are in recognition of uh, outstanding students in Biblical Languages. The Zondervan uh, Biblical Hebrew Award is awarded every year to a student who has shown exceptional aptitude in Biblical Hebrew. And uh, when it comes to Biblical Hebrew, there are not too many students always to choose from because few take that course. And uh, uh, I'm very pleased to award uh, this award today to Barbara Geisendorfer.
I doubt she's here right now. She actually only comes just to take Hebrew, and my final for Hebrew is at 1 o'clock today, so she's probably someplace studying for it. Uh, but the winner of the award here is uh, gifted by Zonerbin, a free resource to continue their Hebrew studies. Thank you much. As Mr. Suma said, not a lot of you elect to do the double hard work of going on and really specializing in biblical languages. And it does take a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication to do that. Uh, I was honored this year. We have a good group of, uh, of Greek scholars who have come through our program, including three who actually did an extra semester of Greek uh, and did a Greek lit independent study with me this year. And so they had completed at least four semesters of biblical Greek, uh, five semesters, I guess, of biblical Greek. And so uh, I'm really pleased. And when I began looking at the award, really all three of these students in particular uh, would, have, would have been more than qualified for it. But in the end, uh, lots of times what I do is I just kind of look back and see who had the best grades in all the classes as they went back. And, and the student that I chose this year to receive the biblical Greek award didn't have the best grades from, from year one on as they did. But what they did have is they had a continuing ability to improve themselves and put an incredible amount of work into it. And in the end, I think through that hard work, showed that they had the best grasp of being able to read and interact uh, with the text in a good way. And so I'm really pleased uh, now to give the Biblical Greek Award to Aaron Dow. At this point in time, we would like to honor uh, the students that are receiving degrees uh, this year. So we're going to ask them to come up. They will certainly be honored tomorrow, but we want to also honor them today. We'll start with the associate degree students. And when I call your name, if you'd come up and stand uh, to this side of uh, the podium, we would appreciate it. Um, our associate degree recipients have completed a minimum of 60 hours of study composed of biblical studies, professional studies, and general education studies. This year's um, associate degree earners are McKay Applegarth, Evan Barthel, Michael Briggs, Carly Clinton. Cairo Davis, <laughs> Seth Dusenberry, <laughs> Shannon Halpin, <laughs> Benjamin Jensen, <laughs> Kurt Kanonen, <laughs> Katie Madras, <laughs> Lucas Reynolds. and Stephanie Welch. We'd like to congratulate you all. You'll notice that there, not every name that is called is uh, here today. Uh, we have a significant number of our graduates this year who are online graduates. Some of them have made it here. Some of them have not. Some of them will be here tomorrow. And so... Uh, um, but we want to congratulate our associate degrees. As you, as you go back to your seat, would you please come and, and grab a subscription and then the uh, registration? So. And we will see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock for sure. Next, we would like to honor our Bachelor of Religious Studies graduates. These students have earned a minimum of 60 hours at Central, 
composed of biblical studies, professional studies, and general education studies. And additionally, they have completed 60 hours or more elsewhere. They completed these hours, depending on their program, either before they came to Central, while they were attending Central, or after uh, they finished their studies at Central through one of our partnership, uh, perhaps, colleges. The following students have completed the requirements for the Bachelor of Religious Study degree. Jessica Black. <laughs> Kevin Hall. Delaney Hamilton. Jasmine Hawkins. Trevor Jones. Jeremiah Scadden. Sam Shelton. And Corey Sutphin. This is a degree that uh, a lot of the online students take as they're non-traditional students often and, and they finish their degree online. Congratulations, y'all. Our next degree is our Bachelor of Science degree. These students have earned a minimum of 132 hours of biblical studies, professional studies, and general education studies. Uh, the next two degrees, the, the uh, Bachelor of Science and the Bachelor of Arts students have completed 51 hours of biblical studies. So uh, they know their Bibles well. They've studied within a particular emphasis. So not only have they received a, uh, a, a thorough teaching in Bible, but they've also been trained in ministries such as Christian counseling, Christian education, Christian ministries, cross-cultural ministry, preaching ministry, and youth and family ministry. The following students have completed the requirements for the Bachelor of Science degree. So this is going to be a large group. So if you would, come up and go away over that way, okay? Here are the, the students who have earned the Bachelor of Science degree. Hannah Belzer. Dylan Bradshaw, Nicole Carros, Martha Davidson, Danielle Davis, Nathan Fleming, Cecilia Fox, Patrick Gold, Miranda Grabby. Jeffrey Greenwell, Philip Holden, Deja Jackson, <laughs> Bailey Croning, Christopher Lawrence, Micah Lockman, Sarah Massey, Lance Patrick, Sierra Price, Lauren Stone, Giselle Tuple, Ashley Wood, Matthew Woodrum, and Nicholas Wright. Hey, 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 please uh, pick up your subscription and your registration on your way. Our last degree recognition today is the Bachelor of Arts. Bachelor of Arts students have earned a minimum of 132 hours, composed of biblical studies, professional studies, and 
general education studies. They also have studied within a particular emphasis in ministry, including biblical research, Christian counseling, Christian education, Christian ministries, cross-cultural ministry, preaching ministry, and youth and family ministry. Within this curriculum, they have also studied a minimum of 15 hours of language studies in Koine Greek and or Biblical Hebrew. The following students have completed the requirements for the Bachelor of Arts degree. Evan Barthel. Jordan Dodge. Aaron Dowell. Don Fisher. Ryan Fisher. Bryce Houchin. And Duncan Stevens. Congratulations. Please pick up your uh, subscription and your registration. At this point in time, we would like to honor students uh, for academic accomplishments. The three awards that we are currently giving away are called Cum Laude um, recognitions. And so colleges traditionally honor those students who have excelled in their studies, and the three recognitions for academic excellence are cum laude, which means with honor. That's for students who have a 3.5 to 3.74 cumulative GPA. Above that is magna cum laude, which means with great honor. And those students have a 3.75 to a 3.89 cumulative GPA. And then the third and highest group is summa cum laude, which means with highest honor. We will recognize these uh, one group at a time. We're going to line up on this side of, uh, uh, of the front here. And our cum laude recipients who will receive an honors uh, cord. So at graduation, please keep this cord and wear this cord um, at graduation, uh, and that recognizes uh, your accomplishments. We have four students receiving the Cum Laude Award. They are Jordan Dodge, Aaron Dowell, Ryan Fisher, and Duncan Stevens. Congratulations, thanks for your hard work. Magna Cum Laude students, we have four students receiving the Magna Cum Laude recognition. They are Bailey Croning, <laughs> Micah Lockman, Sarah Massey, and Corey Sutphin. Assisting us today, we have Rhonda Dunham, our uh, Director of Academic Services. Summa cum laude recipients are, these students received a 3.9 or higher cumulative grade point average. Don Fisher. Woo! 
Cecilia Fox. Jeff Greenwell. Sierra Price. And Sam Shelton. Congratulations, thank you for your hard work. Our next award is an award that is given through our accrediting association, uh, the ABHE, the Association for Biblical Higher Education. They've chosen Delta Epsilon Chi to designate the Honor Society because uh, the Delta, the Epsilon, and Chi represent a phrase that the Apostle Paul used in Romans chapter 16, verse 10. He wrote about a man named Apelles who is said to be approved in Christ. And so they've chosen the letters uh, from those words uh, to designate this honor society. The honor society encourages and recognizes students and graduates from ABHE-affiliated schools who have distinguished themselves through intellectual achievement, Christian character, and leadership ability. The faculty of Central Christian College of the Bible carefully consider which three individuals among the graduating seniors have set themselves apart through their academic excellence, leadership, and character demonstrated through their years here. And they have chosen the three to which the honor of approved in Christ is bestowed. So typically each year we have three of our graduates, and then we also will have honored graduates. Our three uh, 2018 graduates who have received this award through ABHE, but selected by our faculty, are Evan Barthel, Aaron Dowell, and Bailey Croning. Bailey, you want to show us your certificate? You want to open it up, open it up. When I applied for my, my doctorate, uh, I was asked a surprise question. What will you contribute to our institution? It's not what I expected to, to be asked in an in a, in a interview. We appreciate all of our students and what they've contributed to our institution. But some of our students have uh, done a fantastic job in demonstrating that. Uh, I believe the Delta Epsilon Chi students are those kinds of students. I want to recognize our honorary De Delta Epsilon Chi students. Each year, we have the faculty look at the previous um, decades of students to bestow the honorary Delta Epsilon Chi award because uh, for them, the, the award was not in existence. And so they wanted us to, to hand those out. And so the faculty looks at, this year we would have looked at the 2008 graduates, 98, 88, 78, 68, we have graduates in 58? 58. And so they looked at those and, and selected um, two graduates to be honored. Uh, the first one, Russell Cobb, is on our board of directors, and Russ preached in chapel a couple weeks ago and received his award then. And our other award winner will, be, will receive his award tomorrow, and he is our graduation, our commencement speaker. And that would be Troy Easley. I believe Russ was a 1988 graduate and, and Troy was a 1998 graduate. Okay, at this time we want to honor our two highest academic awards. They are known as the Salutatorian and the Valedictorian. 
So these are the students with the highest GPA in the class of 2018. The salutatorian honor is given to the graduating senior who completed at least 90 hours of credit at Central and has the second highest cumulative GPA on a four-point scale. The 2018 salutatorian is Dawn Fisher. Congratulations. The valedictorian honor is awarded to the graduating senior who completed at least 90 hours of credit at Central with the highest cumulative GPA. The 2018 valedictorian is Cecilia Fox. <laughs> Congratulations. The uh, salutatorian and valedictorian receive a medal and a court. If you are receiving a cord today or a medal, please wear them uh, to graduation. At this point in time, we would like to rec recognize um, the Servant Leader Award winners. Daryl, you going to handle all of this? You want me to handle part of it? Thank you. Uh, I didn't win it. I don't. In John chapter 13, uh, there's an incredible scene in the midst of that narrative of the Last Supper where Jesus, without saying a word, the host of the dinner gets up and he wraps a towel around his waist and he begins washing the feet of his disciples. That is the character that we're trying to build here at Central Christian College of the Bible. Leaders who step back, wash feet, and, uh, and accomplish that without any honor to themselves. And it's, it's our opportunity once a year to lift up a couple of graduates who have exhibited that character over their time here at Central the Servant Leader Award is given to a male and a female graduate of CCCB to recognize their modeling of personal integrity and discipleship, as well as their experience in discipling others. These students display the following principles. Honorable behavior, being reverent, self-control, examples of good deeds. Honorable values, that is, valuing family, kindness, submission, pure doctrine, and, di and dignity. Honorable speech, meaning no slander. Teaching the good, having controlled and sound words. Honorable relationships through discipling others. Godly love for family and others. There were two men and four women nominated for the Servant Leader Awards this year. And then the student body chooses out of those nominees. And so this is really the award you guys are bestowing upon your classmates who've exhibited this kind of character. With that said, on behalf of the student body and CCCB, please help me honor our servant, lead, servant leader award recipients of 2018, Bailey Kronig, And Aaron Dow. Congratulations for being recognized by your peers as 
uh, outstanding followers of Jesus. Uh, the Servant Leader Award winners receive a towel. Uh, has uh, Servant Leader Award 2018 Central Christian College of the Bible. Are we done? No, we're not done? Okay. All right, let's have some announcements. All right? <laughs> I want to encourage you to complete your course evaluations online. All right? We use this information to... Uh, uh, improve our classes. So please leave that information uh, that your professors uh, will see, and they will use that as they analyze, evaluate how the, the class has gone. If you have not, please pre-register for your classes for next fall. Raise your hand if you have not pre-registered yet. <laughs> Tomorrow at 1 o'clock, we have practice rehearsal for graduation. Graduates need to be here at one o'clock. Bring your cap and gown. We will rehearse and that will include a walk across the stage. We want you to know uh, what that's going to be like. And so uh, that should take hopefully less than an hour. Today? Tomorrow. Yeah, bring your cap and gown. At the end of our rehearsal tomorrow, we will take a group picture of graduates. So make sure that... Uh, um, you fit in by bringing your cap and gown. Then we have a reception at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon in the Walton Student Center. Uh, there's a limited number of people that can attend that. Graduates, you have tickets. Uh, we look forward to seeing you there. And you can bring your family and meet with the faculty and staff at the Walton Student Center at 3 o'clock. Graduates need to meet in the Pioneer Room at 5.30. Pioneer Room. We will have a uh, sort of a sweet farewell as we... Uh, talk about things, and we spend a time of prayer together. All the caps and gowns have been picked up, haven't they? Yeah, so that's, that's good. You can pick up your cap and gown from Rhonda if you haven't done that yet. There will be a live stream of, commit, of uh, commencement at cccb.edu slash live. So if you're not able to make it to commencement or you want somebody to watch it uh, and see you graduate, they can do that through the live stream. At this time, I'd like to invite Jason Posnick, our professor of preaching ministry, if he would come up. And uh, Jason is going to share uh, a memento with our senior sermon students. At the beginning of the semester, six students accepted the challenge to stand up on this stage behind us and deliver a senior sermon. A picture was taken and has been framed, and so each of them will be receiving a picture of themselves <laughs> preaching on this stage. I'll call them up one by one, and after they've all received their picture, they will have their picture taken, and from that six, the class order will be announced. One by one, Evan Barthel. Aaron Dowell. Lance Patrick, Chris Lawrence, Bryce Houchin, and Corey Sutphin. for your preparation for delivering great sermons and your courage to get up in front of your peers and your faculty and staff. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Before they left, I wanted to announce who the class order was. Class order is chosen by the faculty from the students who, are, uh, who do the, the sermons. And this year's class orator, who will come and give us a message and then will dismiss us with a prayer and... It's the last chapel of the semester, and you can leave the chairs where they sit, please. Okay? So good job putting chairs away all semester. Your reward is 
No chairs today. Evan Barthel, would you please come and share with us? Evan receives a, uh, a medal oh, yeah. and a cord. Thank you. You don't have to wear those during your message. Oh, great. Okay. Remember, when you pray, we're dismissed. Okay. Um, do you want me to be up there? Okay. Well, we'll, we'll just, I'll go up there. All right, um, I'm actually going to start off by praying because I'm a little shaky. And so we'll see what happens uh, by the end of the message, and then we'll just dismiss after I'm done. Okay, let's go ahead and pray. Um, Father God, Lord, we're so uh, thankful uh, for this school, God, um, for uh, just all that we uh, get to experience and learn while we're here. Um, and Lord, uh, as I'm graduating and, and a few of us are, um, we look back and we're just, uh, we're just so amazed by your grace, God, um, that we got to be here, um, that we got to uh, just do all of the, all of the things that, that we never expected, really, and be prepared for all the stuff that we're not, we're not expecting. Um, I guess all that to say, like, I'm just thankful for everything, but, but we don't know what's next, but that's okay, because here we've learned to trust you, God. Um, so we're thankful for that. So God, I pray as we go out to our summers and out to the real world, um, Lord, that you just, uh, that we'd stay connected to you, God, and that you would lead us. It's in your name I pray. Amen. All right. So I was, I was thinking this week over, over my time at Central, and I realized something, that both of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie remakes came out during my time here. And now, and now, how many of you love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and regard the Michael Bay remakes as some of your favorite movies? Okay, like three of you. Okay, well, let me tell you something. I don't. I don't like those movies really that much. They're really not that good. But whenever the trailers came out for those movies, I was so excited. I had really high expectations because I loved the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as a kid. And so maybe it was nostalgia, or maybe it was just hoping that Michael Bay would make something good again, but I was really excited to see those movies. I had really high expectations. And so whenever the movies went to the theaters, the, the first one, I, I, went, I went there and I bought my ticket, and I walked to the auditorium door and I went in, expecting my ex expectations to be met. And so I, I, I went in the theater, in the auditorium, and I sat down, and I pulled out the candy that I smuggled in, and the previews, they started going. And once they were over, the movie started, and I watched. And as I watched, my, my uh, expectations, my high expectations, were slowly being broken. As I, as I watched bit by bit, I became more and more disappointed as I realized this is not a good movie. <laughs> and my expectations were shattered. And I imagine that all of us can figure out a time or, or think of a time when our expectations were shattered. And maybe before you came to Central, you, you didn't like the way your life was going. Maybe you were struggling in school and, and you were caught in some sexual sin. And, and maybe you, you, uh, you were hanging around with, with people that you shouldn't have been hanging around with. You were following the crowd instead of following Christ. And you didn't like your life, but no matter how hard you tried, you couldn't, you couldn't change those patterns. And so your youth minister, she told you about, about Central and how it changed her life. And so you wanted that. So you came here expecting that your life would change. You came here expecting that the wholesome community, it would, it would just cause great people to flock to you and be your friends. You, you thought that maybe being filled up with spiritual things would cause that sin to just go away. Or maybe you expected that, that your, uh, the third thing I said, uh, maybe you expected that, uh, that your grades, you know, that, that, you would be so passionate about ministry that your grades would be the top of the class. But then you got here and you realized community doesn't just happen. You have to work at it. 
you got here and you, and you realized that, oh, well, that chronic sin, it's still there. You got here and you realized that actually you're, you're doing harder work in your classes now than you were in high school, and you're doing it just to pass. So your expectations were shattered. And it leaves you wondering, so what now? Or maybe, maybe uh, you signed up to have a, 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 a conversation partner to teach them English. Uh, they were from another culture, and so you're teaching them English through using the Bible. And so you get really excited. You expect that you're going to go teach them some scriptural truth, and they're gonna, it's going to take root in them, and they might even become a Christian. So you have your first meeting with them, your second meeting with them, and it seems to go well. You're working through the Gospel of Luke, but then you notice, as you guys are talking about it, your conversation partner seems kind of off-put by the things that you're saying. So the third meeting comes around, and they don't show up. So you text them, and they say, oh yeah, I got busy, I'm sorry, we'll schedule another one. So you schedule a fourth meeting, but they don't show up. A fifth meeting, but still they don't show. A sixth meeting, but they don't come to any of them. So your expectations of changing a life were shattered. And for those of us graduating, we have great expectations of our future. I mean, with the education that we now have and the jobs that we're going to, we expect great things out of, out of who we will be and what we will do. We, we expect to, be, to build up great youth programs. We expect to, to build great churches. We expect to go be great educators and change lives. We expect to go and convert the masses in the mission field. We expect a lot of things. But what happens when our expectations are shattered? When we go out into the real world and realize that we can't meet those expectations. The disciples in Mark chapters 9 and 10, um, they're a lot like us. They had some high expectations of, this, of themselves. And if, if you're reading in Mark chapter 9, they go, they, as they're going to Capernaum with Jesus, um, they're, they're walking along and they're having an argument. And when they get to Capernaum, Jesus asks them, what were you guys talking about on the way here? And no one answers. But this is Jesus we're talking about, so he already knew the answer. And so they were discussing which of them was to be the greatest. They were probably battling with whispers so that Jesus couldn't hear them. Like, he takes me everywhere. There's no way I'm not the greatest. But he takes me most places. He called you Satan like three weeks ago. There's no way that you're going to be greater than me. But that was a metaphor. Do you even know what a metaphor is, Peter? Like, things like that, just <laughs> going back and forth. And the disciples were arguing about which of them would be the highest as they were cutting each other low. Their expectation was that they would be great because of their special relationship with Jesus. But how did they measure greatness? When we read on in, in, in these chapters, you see a, another scene that comes up where the disciples see a man casting out demons in, in the name of Jesus, and they tell him to stop. They see that he's not one of the twelve, and so they, they don't think he's great enough to do that, so they rebuke him. But then Jesus rebukes the disciples. And then in another scene, these great disciples see these, these children that are coming up to Jesus, and the parents want the children to come just so they can touch him. But the disciples look at those children, and the children are on the lowest rung of the social ladder. I mean, I mean they're, they're totally helpless, dependent on everyone else. They can't contribute to society. So they look at the low children, and they say, no way, you're not touching Jesus. But Jesus rebukes the disciples. And then in another scene, James and John come to Jesus and they're talking about the same thing they were talking about before. And they ask Jesus, can we be on your left and right in heaven? Right and left? And the other disciples, they get kind of mad because now James and John skipped the roundtable discussion and just, just went straight to Jesus. But in this, in this picture, in this scene, Jesus shows us what they were thinking of as greatness. He says, you know the Gentiles lord, over, lord their position over their people. And their high men, their, their, their great men, they express authority over all. And James and John were probably getting excited, like, yes, that's what we want. Go ahead, Jesus, bestow it on us. Here it comes. The disciples, they thought that greatness was ruling over people. It was, it was lording over people and, and having them serve them. But Jesus tells them three times in these two chapters, the last shall be first, and the first last. 
He was saying, I realize what you think greatness is, but you're thinking of it all wrong. You've got it twisted. Greatness is not lording over others. I've been trying to tell you guys since for like the last couple weeks, I'm going to suffer and die. Use my example. See, the disciples thought that their greatness was based on their relationship with Jesus, who is the greatest. But Jesus is saying that I, the Son of Man, didn't even come here to be served, but to serve and give my life as a ransom for many. So the disciples' expectations were shattered. Greatness isn't what they thought it would be. Hmm. See, somewhere along the way, the disciples, like their, their expectations started out great. I mean, they wanted to follow Jesus, right? But somewhere along the way, their expectations became more influenced by the Gentiles' expectations for greatness, by worldly greatness. But Jesus is saying, you expect to be great? You expect to have authority? You expect to be great by following me? Then actually follow me to service and to death. Because the greatest thing that you can expect in my kingdom is to become a greater servant. The disciples' worldly expectations were shattered. And sometimes I think that maybe we allow our expectations to be influenced by the world. But how can we not? Like, how do we stop? I mean, when we graduate from here and we come out with a degree that says Christian leadership, people expect us to lead a lot of people into, into great things, right? Right? When we, when we leave with a degree that says preaching ministry, people expect us to, to lead churches and, and, and produce sermons that revive dead churches and expand them beyond their walls. When we leave here with a degree that says youth and family, we, we're expected to be youth ministers who can, who can make an impact in kids' lives and, and change their families as well, teaching their parents to minister to the kids. A lot is expected of us from the world. But Christ is saying, that's not how I measure greatness. Even if you only lead 10 people in your whole life, even, even if your youth ministry, even if your youth group doesn't increase but decreases in number, even if you don't produce Andy Stanley level sermons and get that kind of success, even if you're not a great educator, your lessons, they don't, they don't impact a whole lot of people, even if in counseling you only have a handful of clients throughout your whole life who you've helped, even if your expectations or the expectations the world puts on you are shattered. Even if the expectations of what you will do and who you will be are gone, greatness is still available. You just have to raise your expectations. Because if we're being honest, we want to be great youth ministers. We want to be great preachers. We expect to be great counselors. We expect to be great missionaries. The disciples expected to be great leaders. They expected to be great rulers. They expected to have thousands serve them. But Christ is saying, no, that is not how I measure greatness. Stop thinking of greatness the way the world thinks of greatness. Greatness is not lording over others. It's kneeling down and serving others. Greatness is not trying to gain fame and recognition. It's recognizing your place and, and giving others the respect they deserve. Greatness is not trying to follow in someone else's footsteps. It's turning around, bending down, and washing someone's feet. Greatness. Greatness is found by those who serve. The greatest thing that you can expect from this life is to become a greater servant. And Jesus has the same message for us. And if we all had that expectation, if we all truly believed that the greatest thing we can expect in life is to become a greater servant, things would start to change. The world would start to notice as the church, well, they, they start to look a whole lot more like the cross not just in symbol, but in substance. As we follow our Savior to service and to death, the people will notice that we are becoming greater servants. And as we do that, the kingdom will rise up, the true kingdom will rise up out of the pile of the world's shattered expectations.